In this video, we'll learn how we can build a fully functioning agent using JSON mode only. It'll have access to write file, read file, and list from, from folder, and it will be working in this agent works folder. Let's ask it to create 10 full sample emails as a JSON object in a file indented nicely. It's going to do a function call to write sample emails.json using write the file. It has returned a conclusion saying that the emails are written and sample emails.json is created. Let's ask it to create a Python, Python app that reads this file and saves the emails to SQLite DB. It's going to create a save emails to do the .py file. It's currently writing it. It has written this file. Let's go ahead and run it, see if it works. I'm going to create a new split terminal so I can run this while the agent is still running. I'm going to go into the agent works directory and run the save emails to db.py file and emails.db was created. Let's open it with SQLite Weaver, which is an extension you can install. And all the emails have been added to our SQLite database. Let's ask it to create a new file, which allows us to search over the DB and display the results in a while loop. It's going to create search emails.db.py file. Code files for this project will be available at my Patreon. Link is in the description. It created the search emails.db, but currently it searches with full email addresses. But we want to search for keywords from even the body or the subject of the email, including the email itself. I'm asking it to do to rewrite the file so that we can do keyword search over all the fields and it's going to re rewrite that file search emails db.py and it looks like it's going to allow us to search for keywords let's try it again let's search for meeting see if it'll find it yeah see it has found the meeting email meeting update let's search for newsletter and it has found the newsletter from the from email so it was able to uh, do this this is nice you can actually just talk to it uh, regularly too. It doesn't have to do a function calling. I just say, how are you? It'll respond regularly and its function list is going to be empty. It always returns a conclusion as well. So let's begin with a simple example and then we'll slowly uh, add features to it. To build this, I am using the GPT calls class from OpenAI Unified that I have created. This is simply, this just has all the calls and message management and history management. It just makes our life easier and it has all the necessary calls you might need, including setting the JSON mode or streaming to true. If you'd like to know more about it, you can just watch the video on OpenAI Unified API where I go explain it in detail. But I'll explain each of the methods that we're using for this implementation. First of all, we are uh, importing the GPT calls, which is the main class, which includes all the attributes and the uh, potential OpenAI API calls uh, you need to make. And you can initialize it with JSON mode true, which we're going to do in this case, and stream set to true, so we can stream responses. We are going to define a function, which is just going to be write to file function. It just takes in file name and text and just writes it to file. And because we have initialized our agent, we can now use its add message method. This is just to add messages, both for system, assistant, or user. If we just control click on the add message, you can see that it just automatically handles the management of the messages list and that's it. It's very straightforward. There's no fancy tricks going on here. It just pretty much does some checks and adds the messages. So in this case, we are adding a system message and we are telling it that here are the functions available to you. And I just copy pasted the entire function. I just wanted to see if this will work and it does. And then I said, always respond with a JSON object with the following structure. It's a list set. So the function, function name, args1, whatever the arguments it thinks it needs to put because it can see it in the description. And that's it. And then I just run a while loop, taking a user input and using the chat functionality. If you look at the chat method, it just uses the add message, which we have just seen. And then the get response method, which just makes a call to GPT with the appropriate parameters. I'm just going to ask it to write a Python file with a list of 10 different Python concepts I should learn. And as you can see, it's just going to go ahead and create the structure. It's going to give a file name. It's going to give the function name and it's going to give the text. Currently in this implementation, we're not doing anything. This was just a test to see if it'll actually follow these instructions. And as you can see, it does. Let's ask it to please create three files with 10 word story each about AI. So this first version is not very good at following and returning multiple function calls, but the next one uh, will be able to. Let's move on. If you are enjoying my projects, you'll have access to over 200 of them at my Patreon, which is a result of over 2,000 hours of effort in the last year. And I put in 30 to 50 hours of coding every week to output 8 to 15 new projects, which uh, my patrons have access to. Thank you for your support. Let's get back to the code. So in our second file, uh, we are defining two functions, and we are actually using a better method 
to map the functions so we can actually execute them. We are again uh, in the same way defining our agent with JSON mode and streaming set to true. Define two functions. And as you can see, the read from file is only taking an argument and write the file can take in keyword arguments and we are handling it here in the message, system message. And then we, are, we just have a function map, which we manually define. We have two functions, so we have defined them. And in our system message, we are again pasting the full functions. In the next file, we're going to see how we can do this dynamically. And we are saying when responding to user inputs, your response should be a JSON object with a specific structure to facilitate executing functions safely and efficiently. Each response must be formatted as follows. So this response is pretty much kind of like a plan. It's, it's what it says to begin with. And then it has a function list. As you can remember from our first example, it wasn't returning multiple functions. So that's why we are now actually defining a function list within which we have these dictionaries, which is going to include a function name an argument list of arguments and then keyword arguments just in case if it needs it the gpt will know what those are from these functions which we have pasted directly so we haven't really defined it in any particular way we have just pasted the functions that's it and we say additional function calls can follow in the list and we also have an additional explanation this is probably not even necessary but we just explain what each do, each of those fields are and then we have an execute function uh, function which is going to take in the function details and it's going to get the function name arguments and keyword arguments from it. And it's going to check if this function name is in our function map. And then it's going to execute with the arguments and keyword arguments provided for that function. And then just returns a, a success message, otherwise a failure message. And within an infinite loop, we take in user input. We again use the chat method uh, to just send the response, send the user message to GPT. And we loop over the function detail in the functions list. As you can see, it's going to be these details right here, which is a dictionary. And for each one of those, we're going to execute the function. If it is a success message, then we are actually printing the success message. Let's run this. Again, I'm going to ask, please write three files with a 10 word story about AI. And this one, this time it's defining a function list. This is going to be the first function. This is going to be the second function, AI story 1.txt, 2.txt, and 3.txt. And we execute those functions within the loop. And as a matter of fact, we have saved them to files as well. You can easily find all my projects at my website, echohive.live. And if you're a patron, you can find the code download links here as well. While you're there, make sure to check out the Auto Streamer, which is an app I created, which auto creates content, allows you to record it or live stream it. And it builds a course website in real time. You can watch the live stream. I did showcasing its abilities. You can also see the sample website it has built. This is the website we had built. Uh, during that live stream. NumPy introduction and arrays. You can also use this website to brush up on your Python. I also created this fast Python .app, which is deployed at Railway, which allows you to quickly check out some Python concepts. It's a pretty cool app. Uh, it's available at this URL. I'll put it in the description. So our third and final file automates this process even further. We have now moved uh, functions to a functions.py file, which we will dynamically retrieve from. That's why we are importing import lib and inspect, which is going to allow us to use the functions from the function.py file without really importing them. We are initializing our agent the same way. We are creating an agent works folder if it doesn't exist. So the functions only deal with that folder, nothing outside of it. Now here we are dynamically loading the module containing the functions uh, like this on line 12. And now we are dynamically constructing a function map. So instead of manually defining this function map uh, in source abilities of Python using inspect is going to allow us import lib and inspect is going to allow us to create a function map and also generate the function descriptions, including arguments. So this is what we are doing here, creating a function map and then using inspect module to actually create function description strings, which is going to, uh, which we are going to give to the system message of GPT, which is going to let it know which arguments to return for which function. Other than that, the rest of our system message remains the same, uh, pretty much. And now we have the execute function as before. And then during this while loop, we get a response. We make sure we check that function list is in response, just in case, because we are using JSON mode, GPT might decide not to return this. And if we have a list, then we loop over it. And then we execute those functions and add uh, using the add message method, we add it to back to GPT history. So it knows what it has just done. And at the end, I have optionally to get a final response after all these functions are executed. I thought this was unnecessary. I thought this conclusion key, 
that it will return within its JSON response should be sufficient to give you information on what has taken place. So we can just run this and use it as an agent. I'm going to ask for create files for classes for basic power defense game. And it's going to create a game.py file, uh, enemy.py file. So these are just kind of simple initialization style classes. I do want to let you know that this is a pretty basic implementation of an agent. Uh, I just wanted to try to see if this was possible just using JSON mode. And it was. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I think there's quite a lot possible with the ideas that is presented in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like talking about large language models, please join our uh, Discord, who has over 1,000 members. Link will be in the description. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.